Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we'll be doing Brawl Stars attack system. In the previous one, we covered player movement, and I'll link the previous one in description. So do check it out. And without any further ado, let's get started. This is where we left last time. I added a second joystick for our attack system. I made an empty game object. I named it Attack Trail. I'll add a new script. I'll name it Player Attacking, and we'll add a line render to it. Let's change the alignment to transform Z. I added a new script to our camera and I made it move with the player. I made a, a float value for setting the offset between our camera and uh, our player. I'll add this offset to the Z value of our camera position. This is how it should look by now. Let's open our player attacking script. I'll give reference to our line renderer and our attacking joystick. We'll check if the horizontal and vertical axis of our joystick is bigger than 0.5f. Only then we'll show our line renderer. I've put everything that the player would be using in an empty game object named player underscore. I'll make another empty game object. that would act as a look at point for our line. We did the same thing for the movement by making a sprite. Let's give reference to it in our player attacking script. I'll copy bunch of code from our player movement script because it's going to be the same. I'll change player sprite to attack look at point and uh, our joystick to attack joystick. Let's make a raycast from our transforms position to the forward axis. I'll make a serialized float that will control the distance of our raycast. I'll start by setting lines position at zero index, add transform dot position, and inside the if statement, we'll set the lines position at the first index. As in the actual game, the line shows if the attack is being cut off by a wall in between. I'll make a raycast hit so we can see if there's any other collider. Let's do out and our raycast hit just before the ray distance. Now we can simply set the position to hit dot point. I by mistake did trail render instead of line render, so I'll just correct it. I also used Euler angles to fix the rotation movement only in y axis of our attack trail. And as it's a separate game object, we'll make it move with the player the same way we did for the camera. At this point, I was able to see the line, but only when it hits a collider because of the raycast. So in the else statement of our raycast, I set the position from transform dot position to the forward axis multiplied with the trail distance. This is how it should look by now. But the line renderer wasn't getting disabled, so that's what I did in the else statement of if the horizontal and vertical axis of the joystick is less than 0.5f and hence I had to enable it back again. Do note that I made a child object to our attack train that was holding the line renderer. At this point line was getting disabled. Now let's start instantiating some bullets. I'll make a spare and I'll also make it into a prefab. I'll add a new script to a bullet game object. Now in our player attack script, I'll make a boolean shoot. This will tell us when we should instantiate our bullet. Now if our line is currently being showed, I'll check if our shoot boolean is false, then I'll make it true. To which I'll add another else if statement. I'll and we'll check if shoot is true. And for the testing purpose, I'll use input.get mouse button down. It won't work on the mobile devices, so we'll work on it in a second. Let's check with debug.log when this will be called. Now you'll see when shoot will be true and we'll get our mouse button up. We'll get a message shoot on our console. I'll make our trail distance public because we'll be using it in our bullet script because our total trail distance is the farthest our bullet can travel. I gave reference to our player attacking script and I also made a new vector 3 bullet in distance which is same as our line's total distance. Now in update we can simply check if our bullet's position is bigger than equals to our bullet end distance, then we'll destroy the bullet game object. In update as well, let's make the bullet travel in the forward axis. I'll also make a public float speed that will control the speed of our bullet. 
Now finally in start let's find our game object that is holding the player attacking script and I also did on collision enter to destroy the bullet game object if it hits enemy or a wall. This is how our bullet script should look. You can pause to see if you missed anything. But right now we are not instantiating any bullets. So I'll give reference to our bullet prefab in our player attacking script. And in our on mouse button down, I'll instantiate these bullets at transform.position and with the transforms rotation. I'll give reference to our bullet prefab and at this point everything seems to be working great. But we are instantiating these bullets from the leg portion of the player. So instead of transform.position I made a vector 3 which used transforms position at x and z axis but for the y axis I gave a suitable value. And now everything looks pretty good but at the moment we are just instantiating a single bullet. So let's work on instantiating multiple. So I ended up making a coroutine in which the first bullet is being instantiated at the beginning of the coroutine and the rest of them in a for loop. I made an integer number of bullets to decide how many total number of bullets we are going to instantiate and I used it as a maximum value for the for loop. I subtracted one to it as we are instantiating one bullet at the beginning of the coroutine. And there we go, now we are instantiating three of them. Watch our object pooling tutorial to instantiate at start and reuse the same prefab. Alright, now let's work on the animation part. I'll make our character spine free. As you can see, I'm trying to rotate it at runtime, but nothing is happening as the animation is controlling it. So we'll go into our animations and we'll delete the keyframes that are using our spine. If your animation is on read only, then you can simply go to your model that's holding the animation and you can duplicate it by control plus D or command plus D. That should make a copy of the animation outside the model and, and this particular animation now can be edited. Now I'll go to our spine rotation and I'll delete the property. Now we are able to rotate the spine. Let's go to our player attacking script and I'll give reference to our spine transform. So I simply change the look at of our player's spine to our attack look at point and well that's not good. So I change the player spine's local rotation to its child object. Everything seems to be working fine now. Finally I added some shooting animations. Another thing I noticed was that hips were being rotated 90 degrees if we were shooting behind the player. So I added this chunk of code in which I converted the Euler angles to get the negative value as well and rotated the hips by checking the difference between our transforms rotation and hips rotation. If it was bigger than 90 then I added 90 to our hips y rotation otherwise I subtracted 90. Final step was to instantiate these bullets using mobile controls. Right now we were using on mouse button down but now I'll make a public function player shooting which will be calling our coroutine and in our joysticks on pointer up I'll be calling the player shooting function. Okay it's finally time to test it on our mobile device. Alright that's it for the video. If it was helpful please leave a like and do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.